Okay, and the eleventh question. So uh, this is from Diggity, who I hope you've heard. Yay! I like him. uh, Yeah. So, who do you enjoy casting with the most, and who do you think you cast best with from an audience perspective? Um. Let's see here. Um. I I'm really liking casting with Wheat these days. Um. I think. A lot of it has to do with how much we've casted together, because casting is a lot about rhythm. It's a lot, lot, lot about comfort and rhythm, and kind of like when I stop talking, I just kind of expect my co-caster to pick up talking, and when I think he's done talking, I want to pick up talking as well. Um, and that is that's surprisingly difficult to do on air. And I even recall from my first few casts with Wheat. I, I felt like I didn't do a particularly good job and didn't quite feel like my usual day nine self. Um, but as I've casted with him more, I've, I've begun really, really liking casting with Wheat a, like a lot. So for instance, I'm very excited that this weekend I'm casting the EG's Master Cup with him. So that's gonna be a, a good bit of fun. Diggity actually was one of the most mind-blowing experiences for me because I didn't really know Diggity very well. Uh, we were just, um, hired independently as two different casters and literally paired together like action figures. And the organizer said, all right, you two are the casters, go. And so it was basically like a cold cast and it felt so natural and felt so good. And Diggity has consistently remained one of my top choices for casting just because of that comfort, how I literally feel like I'm casting with like a buddy and we can feel free to, to talk however we want. Um, so I like that quite a bit. Of course, I gotta give a shout out to Chill, who I did all the TSL stuffs with. He's the man. Okay, so the remaining question is the other three people that would you, that you would choose to defend our planet. Well, Ben Franklin's obviously going to be in the leader's position. Mickey Rourke will be present in order to do flexing. Um, uh, I would choose my life hero, who is my neighbor, a man named John Sand. I'm just going to tell everyone about John Sand a little bit. Um, he is the most amazing person. He has, like, he he takes care of, like, everybody. Like, he, he is so nice to all his kids, and he just loves his wife to death. And his, his, he and his wife just look like two best friends hanging out. And he works really long hours, but he'll come home and he will never complain. I even remember, you know, like, he would help me on chemistry homework. And after, you know, waking up at 3 in the morning to go on call till 8 in the morning when his regular job shift went on, and he'd work till 8 in the evening because it went longer, he would come home and he would call up and say, hey, just wanted to ask if you needed any help on homework. And he would bring, you know, he'd bring you over and he would help you. And then afterwards he'd take you out to ice cream and be like, great job. And he would never complain. He never complains. He's just the sort of person who has decided, no, you know what? I'm just going to be happy and I'm just going to really enjoy myself. And he's also like a very deeply moral person. Uh, and I don't mean in any sort of like super over the top, you know, like I'm going to sell all my possessions and give it to like a needy family. He's, but like in his day to day life, He's always just encouraging and positive and great, and I would want him on the team against the aliens because I know John Sand would do the right thing. He would not be, he would not throw human life away. He would value it, and he's he's also really funny. <laughs> so we need, we obviously need a pretty funny person on there as well. So I got three done, right? I got three people out of the way. Who who else? Who else? Who would be a third person? I'm trying to think of people that, that like, viewers will actually know, because be like, well, I want my friend Phil. He's, uh, he's great. He's good at science. You know, I don't want to... Phil sucks, I guess, is the point of what I'm trying to say. Well, remember, they can be fictional as well. Oh, they could be fictional, couldn't they? I'm going to lean back and look at my comic book collection to see. Peter Parker would actually be terrible. He would be like, God, I don't want to save the world. I just want to sit under the bleachers and make out with my girlfriend. Oh, it's like so juvenile. But of course, I own all the Ultimate Spider-Mans that I can afford. So, uh, <sighs> go figure. Um, uh, um, um, I, this is tough. This is tough. 
I don't know, man. I'm terrible at this. I'm the worst interviewee of all time. I need two more people to defend the world against space aliens? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I would love to have Walter Bishop from Fringe on the team. Because that guy can just come up with technology to just blast people in half. Uh, all in a 42-minute episode. Uh, and also, he's, he's sort of eccentric... And I know John Sand would be good to him, so I'll put I'll put Walter Bishop on the team. That's my semi cop out answer. And I need one more unbelievable epic super giga hero to be on the team. I'm looking at my Akira books, being like, yeah, and I'd put Tetsuo on there because I actually want to win. Um, um, help me out here, Andrew. Give me some categories, man. Real name, okay. Uh. I don't know. Um, a lot of people were asking for StarCraft two players. <laughs> Who's a StarCraft two player I'd want on there? I will put, I think, the most impressive StarCraft player out there of all time, Froz. Froz was a genius. Froz was the sort of person who was so... He was really influential in my early, early days because he would... Well, there's this point you hit when you're a player where you sit down and you watch someone like Nada play or Boxer play, or I guess for the, some of the StarCraft II players out there, when you watch like Fruit Dealer play or Tester play, and you just go, God, he's good. I wish I could be that good. Swoon. And you just kind of have this hopeful yearning. It's almost like a crush, you know, where you just, you just fantasize about being that good. Froz would watch someone like Tester play and go, that guy sucks, I'm better than he is. And then Froz would sit down and actually play better than him, which was something that was, it, it freaked me out, honestly, to watch him play. He would put all his focus in and he would be determined to be better than that guy because when I watch Fruit Seller play or even with Fruit Dealer, or I guess Cool Foo if you're an old school player, Whenever I watch Fruit Dealer play, I'm generally casting. So I do have that sort of positive tone. I'm like, God, he's doing so much good. Sure, I could criticize this placement a little bit, but ah. But Froz would watch these sort of people play and would only look at their flaws and be like, what? He has his, he has 700 minerals? His macro sucks. He has guys queued up there? That's awful. And it was very, very, very harsh. And a huge chunk of improvement that I had was I just started to apply that same sort of harshness to my own play. I'd be like, yeah, I forgot my larva for like 10 seconds. That's awful. I should never forget that kind of larva. And Froz was always convinced that he could be better than these players. Um, because, I mean, even, even something that... Like, there was this build order in Brood War where you would make one barracks and you would expand immediately against Zerg. Immediately. Sometimes before you even made any Marines. And that was commonplace in the last one, two years of, of competitive gaming. Actually, I even say uh, all the way back to like 2006 and seven, people were doing that. But in like 2001, people always made two barracks and then made a good amount of Marines and then they expanded. And Froz would watch those and say, this makes absolutely no sense. There's no reason people should be doing that. It's completely counterintuitive. I'm just gonna go one barracks expand. And he was the only person who did it for like three years. He just trusted himself so deeply. So I would put him on that list, not only because it makes an awesome story for the people listening to this interview, but also because he's the sort of person who would not take any sort of outside influence or judgment. He would always say, I'm better than these people, and he would trust himself. Okay, well, thank you for your time, Day 9. I think that this has uh, gone pretty long, a lot longer than I expected, actually. So, oh, come uh, on, it's me. Of course it's going to go long. It's like, what's your favorite color? Well, it all goes back to when I was eight years old. I don't shut up no matter what, dude. Come on, man. Come on. I meant the ten minutes we spent getting everything ready. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, it's been great having you on for this, these questions. And, yeah, I hope you find success when um, you complete your master's and hopefully get into professional StarCraft um, co um, sorry, commentary. So, uh, hey. yeah, and I know that you have a daily to prepare for later on, so I guess I'll just uh, let you go here. Yeah, and all of you should tune in at www.day9.tv. Hooray! Um, yeah, and of course, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash day9tv, youtube.com slash day9tv, and of course, now you can go to reddit.com slash r slash day9. 
So thank you, Reddit. Big hearts, much love, and thank you always for your support.